Hi and welcome back to a new video. On my table we have the Corsair 5400 that we first saw this year at Computex and Corsair announced this as their first triple chamber case. I'm not sure if they announced it as the first triple chamber case ever and if this is the case. Um, I also saw a triple chamber case that was shown at Computex from Deepcool. In general the concept is that you are disconnecting the AIO airflow from the rest. So in nowadays cases you have a lot of hot air that is dumped into the case by the GPU and if you have the AIO sitting on top it's usually hot air intake and it will have negative impact on your temperatures. The case was already launched a couple of weeks ago. There are great tests out there, for example one from KitGuru that tested a couple of different fan configurations. They also mounted the AIO like incorrectly inside which I find a brilliant idea. And they showed what kind of temperature difference was expected. I think it was like 12 or 13 degrees difference by moving the AIO from here to the third chamber, which is already a great test. But then I thought, you know, in a normal case, you would also still have like fans for cold air intake in the front. So I'm not sure if it makes a big difference or not, or if like just doesn't make a difference, but I wanted to have my own test seeing uh, first a setup in a completely different case, like a standard one with um, fans in the front, and then moving this into this case with a third chamber to see if this is a concept I like. The case itself is available in two versions, one with RS fans, one with LX fans. One is 280 uh, euros, the other one is 330 euros, so it's in general quite expensive case, but I think it's a little bit justified for the kind of features and complexity that you get. And now I just want to test if this is going to be the future for case design, which I think might be, because it absolutely makes sense to disconnect the airflow of the AIO from the rest and just get overall better temperatures. Upgrade to Ultra Class. Meet the new Hetzner EX63, powered by the Intel Core Ultra 7 265 with 20 cores. Your ultimate all-rounder for any project. 12 efficiency cores take care of background tasks, while 8 performance cores deliver serious power for gaming, AI or rendering. Benchmarks show the EX63 sits between the AX52 and the AX102. Top performance at great price. Get started from 76 euro 52 per month and save 15 euro on cloud and storage products using the code STEBOWER15. Hetzner, the digital foundation for businesses and projects with high performance servers and data centers. But before we get deeper into the 5400 by Corsair, I just want to build my comparison system first, which is going to feature 9800X 3D, RTX 5090 and a 360 AIO. So I would say pretty high end, but also kind of standard components that you would use these days for a high-end system and I will build these in an ARX 700 case by Endorphi and that will be our comparison system. In the comparison case we have a 140 fan sitting in the back and also three 140 fans that are included in the case. I just kept them and will reuse them so I have to add the AIO and also the GPU. I won't spend too much time on cable management and stuff, just have it in the back but it won't matter for today's test. System is fully assembled as you can see. I just have to do the configuration of all the case fans, radiator fan and also of the pump. And then we can start doing the temperature test. Obviously we'll do that also with the side panel mounted. Meanwhile, a few days later and I also ran our comparison system for a couple of hours. So we get information about core temperatures and all these kind of things. So we have comparison data. This system has been running for about three hours in this state. We can see an average CPU temperature of 93.5 degrees Celsius, which is definitely the upper limit for this 9800X 3D. That is constantly pulling about 125 watts. It is running Prime95 in the background. Everything is fixed when it comes to the clock and vCore and all of those kind of things. And I also fixed the fan speeds. So fan speed for the AIO is fixed to 1300 RPM as you can see here and the pump is 2500 RPM. We see a fluid temperature of about 52 degrees Celsius. The case fans, so the three for intake, the one for exhaust are running at fixed 600 RPM. Now if we switch to the GPU which is our second important metric, this one is obviously temperature controlled so the fans will differ depending on what kind of temperature we have on the GPU. We have about 78 degrees Celsius and this is resulting in 1620 RPM fan speed for the GPU. So that's our base comparison. 
This also means that I will now take all the components out of the system and will put it into the Corsair case. I also want to highlight that this is not like super scientific, not the best comparison, because it's a different case. It will be different case fans and thus also slightly different noise levels. So it's not like super perfect in terms of comparison. It could be more scientific probably, but we're just looking at just standard case and the Corsair case and trying to look at what's the impact of the dual chambers, especially for the AIO. I also used this to test our prototype for the YRU for a couple of days, almost a week under full load to see if anything changes, if there's something I could spot, but nothing unusual. The current distribution is a bit uneven, but not in a problematic state. The fan speed was typically around 50 to 60%. It's just a bit down now because I opened the side panel and the temperature was typically about 65 degrees Celsius under load. I will be using the LX version of the case, as I said before, it costs about 330 euros, and it comes with three LX reverse fans installed in the bottom, so they will push the air towards the GPU directly, but also to make this look nice in terms of a system, you will probably want to also have three more LX fans in the top, which also means that you will have to buy something like this, which costs another roughly 100 euros. So just uh, yeah, the case with the six fans, will cost you about 430 euros, which is definitely quite a bit. So first removed the top cover and also the top piece of plastic that will sit over the fans. It is kind of useless, the top part, but Corsair made that clear already when they announced the case that only the bottom, this is somewhat yeah, directing the airflow directly towards the GPU. So this on the bottom makes sense. And for the top, they just added it in terms of to have like a symmetric case design. It seems to be a super convenient case for assembly, like all those doors and everything, super easy with just magnets to open. Then you add the PSU on top. Most of the cases would have it on the bottom. Here it's a bit different. On the bottom, you can see this link hub that is included for the three fans on the bottom. And it seems to have super much space for cable management, which I didn't do yet, so I still have to see how it goes, but just first impression, a lot of space, which I think is nice. If you would want your system to look super nice and use the same fans everywhere, I would have to swap the fans on the AIO again for the LX fans, which I don't want to do because it would change or impact the measurement that we did so far with the temperature reading and everything. I just didn't think of this before. I should have done this on yeah the first test setup already, but now I don't want to, so I will just keep these fans, but I will have to mount them on the opposite side of the radiator. Otherwise, as you can see, the tubing would collide with this like mesh front of the case. So I will have to mount the fans just on the back side of the radiator. I removed the fans to be able to move the radiator through this hole. Now I will mount it together with the fans on, on this side. So the fans will be in between here. And then I realized when I was just talking about the fans that there is no LX version of Corsair AIOs, which means that you will have to buy another set of LX fans for your AIO for it to just look nice. Otherwise, I mean, you can use them, but then you will have different fans in your case. It will depend on what you want to do. But just overall, if you pick the LX version and you need LX fans on top and also LX fans for the AIO, it, it just directly comes up to about 600 euros, which is quite a lot. The third chamber is then separated from the rest by this piece of plastic that I just added in here, which is not super convenient to add once the radiator is in place. You just have to understand how it works. That's probably something you figure out once you take it out. So you lift it up, take it out, and once you want to just put it back in, you move it around the radiator, and then from the other side of the case, you can see how the thing just clicks into the side, you push it down and then mount it with the screw on the bottom and then it's thermally separated from the rest. Pretty much done with the system. The only thing I have to still add is the GPU and then we can start testing. I just thought, what is this weird noise coming from the GPU? And then I realized that the GPU holder is just touching the fan and blocking it. First I thought, oh, this is, that's nice. Will keep my or prevent the GPU from sagging, but yeah, 
The system has been running for over an hour under full load and it's time to evaluate the results. What I could directly spot is the temperature that is being displayed on the LCD, which is showing 43 degrees Celsius. And previously we had liquid temperature on the AIO of 52 degrees Celsius. So there is definitely a big difference. IQ shows the same values as before. We see the fans are spinning at 1300 RPM, pump 2500 RPM. And we see that the liquid temperature, as I just said, is down by almost 10 degrees Celsius. On the GPU side, nothing really changed. It's 10 RPM difference, which is basically tolerance. And the temperature is also the same, so 78 degrees Celsius on the core with the same fan speed. On the CPU side though, things changed a lot. We see roughly the same package power. It's even a bit higher than previously. Previously, I think it was like 127. Now it's 133, 34. So it's maybe a bit more power consumption as before, but the temperature is a lot lower. It went down from like 93, 94 to 71. So we see about 22 degrees Celsius lower CPU temperature than in the first setup. So that is a huge difference. The Corsair 5400 perfectly delivered what it was supposed to deliver to thermally decouple the AIO from the rest. And it also means that the fans yeah, don't have to spin anymore as fast as they were spinning because I fixed them at 1300 RPM just for comparison reasons. But in this case, with the fans just having the cold air intake, they could probably now spin at 800 RPM and would still deliver like a good thermal performance for the AIO side. But I also want to point out that in the first setup, we could have also put the AIO in the front, have cold air intake, and we would probably see the same thermals on the CPU. But in that case, you would see a negative impact on the GPU because then the GPU would have just warmer air it would work with for cooling. So we would see just a difference in the GPU cooling. So I'm pretty sure no matter what, this setup would always be superior to just having everything inside one box. In general, the Corsair 5400 has very good build quality. It was also fun to build in this case, even though it was more, more effort than in a standard case. And it also took longer, but that's mainly because, you know, the layout is different. You have covers that you don't have in the other case. I had to figure out how to move those shrouds, how to move the, the separating piece of plastic on the side, how to hook it up and all these kind of things. But that also makes it fun because it's not so much a standard. And if you build a lot of PCs, this is not so normal and just more special. And thus, at least for me, it was a bit more fun to build in this case, even though overall it was more complex. Financially, it's also a difficult topic because if you want to have the Alex fans and everything and you want to have them on the AIO and you need to get a separate set of Alex for the AIO, it, it quickly adds up and it will become a quite expensive build. The three chamber design definitely beats everything else in terms of thermals. But I'm not quite sure if this layout is the perfect layout or if something else might be the thing that we will see in future exhibitions. Because I'm quite sure that in next CES or like Computex, we, we will see more of those three chamber designs. But it doesn't necessarily have to be this one where we move the AIO to the front and to the right. But it also could be the thing that Deepcool was showing that you just have a, a third chamber on top and with this just separate the AIO radiator from the rest. So I think there's multiple approaches to this. But in general, I think it's a very good approach to just keep thermals and also the noise level under control, especially these days with those big, like huge GPUs with high power draw, it absolutely makes sense to split up the things just to improve your thermals and also the noise levels. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye bye.